Hi guys, this is Sam and welcome to Inglogic. After all the recent pronunciation videos on the schwa sound, which you can find over here, I thought we'd take a little bit of a break and have an advanced vocabulary and listening exercise with a little bit of a twist to really test your logical approach to foreign languages. Dotted around the screen, you will see advanced expressions and words that I think are worth focusing on, and usually I would give you their definition, but today I won't, because I want you to guess their meaning based on the context that I use them in. I will then give you a full list of these words towards the end of the video. I'd then like you to write in the comments what you think these words mean, without looking them up, and next week I will put all all the definitions in the description for you to check. It's a great exercise because, as elementary as this may sound, a lot of students often forget that there is a lot that they can do in order to guess more or less the meaning or the idea of a word based on what's around it. At some point in your life, you will hear or see a word that you don't exactly understand and that you can't look up there and then, but instead of panicking, I want you to be able to make your best logical guess. I do it all the time when I read articles in German. There are tens of words I don't understand specifically, but based on the grammar, the other words that I know, the style and the positive or negative concept that the writer wants to convey globally, I can sort of get a sense of what is being said. Now, I could be 100% wrong in my guess, but as you know, I like approaching languages logically and mathematically, so what I do is make my best logical guess based on all the tools that I know and that I can use. And as a teacher, if I see that the student does that, that's exactly what I want, even if the definition they come up with for a word is wrong because if they can give me a logical and mathematical and scientific explanation for it, I can see that at least they're thinking and they're doing the very best that they can. Today I'll tell you all about my summer holidays and I'll pull out all the stops to debunk the terrible myth that England is not a beautiful country. I'll show you the pictures and places that I've seen and also some videos with a view to winning you over and convincing you that England has a lot to offer. Now that I hope I've enticed you with the topic, let's quickly go back to the logical approach I was talking about earlier, and I will give you a very basic example which can however be applied to any situation. If I show you this picture and say a word you don't understand, basically what you hear is, this is blah blah blah, and this blah 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 is mathematically our unknown value, which we can call x. Now, it's impossible for you to understand exactly what it is that I'm saying about this picture, but there is something we can do based on the grammar, at least. If x were a common noun, such as friend, dog, shape, square. In English, it would require the article a or an, and because it's not there, this can't be what I'm saying. So this is something that we can already rule out. Proper nouns like Tom, Alice, on the other hand, don't require an article, so this could technically be an option. Now, this is mathematically possible, however, it's not very probable because it's fairly unlikely that I would give a name to a red square, but technically it is an option that we have. It can't be an adverb. Nicely, happily, it can't be a verb. Cry, buy, eat, but it can be an adjective. Nice, happy, and this is the most likely option for this word. Again, based on that, you can't really tell exactly what I'm saying, but at least you can guess that the chances are that I'm talking about its shape or its colour. If you hear this is blah, 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 ing, you have two options. It could be a present continuous where you have the verb to be plus a verb in ing. So eating, running, buying. Or it could be an adjective ending in ing. Amazing, mind-blowing, depressing. 
I understand that in something taken out of context like this, it's very hard to understand what someone is saying, but this already helps you a lot rule out what something logically isn't. Then normally in a usual sentence, you would get more details as to what someone is referring to. For some weird reason, England is notorious for not being a nice holiday destination, but I want to dispel this false myth because it couldn't be further from the truth. Now, obviously, if your benchmark for a good holiday is the Maldives, then I'm the first one to tell you that England can't quite measure up to that because, let's face it, England, like most other countries in the world, can't hold a candle to the Maldives. But if you lower your expectations ever so slightly and level the playing field, you will see that England is not to be sniffed at. I understand people's reticence about considering England a holiday resort very likely hinges on the weather, and I can't point blank dismiss that as an absurd theory, because it's true that the weather does play up a bit over here, but I don't want to paint the whole country with the same brush. It's true that the weather here tends to be a little bit more fickle and unpredictable than in other countries, and the further up north you go, the colder it gets, but we still get long periods of enjoyable weather over the summer, especially in the south. It also boils down to what hot means to you. I don't like excessive heat, and I come from the north of Italy, where summers are scorching and excruciatingly hot, to the point where the heat burns your soul and affects your mood. And I absolutely detest that, because it makes it hard to enjoy anything, even sightseeing. I was in Florence this August, and as breathtaking as the city was, it was literally painful to be there, and 10 degrees less would have made my holiday much more pleasant and enjoyable. When you go to the seaside in the north of Italy, you must have a parasol or some kind of object that casts a shadow, because you physically can't be in the heat and in the direct sun for long periods of time. When I'm on the beach in Italy, I always follow the shadow of the parasol, so I constantly have to move my sun lounger accordingly, so I don't get burnt in the sun. Thanks to Covid, I got the chance to explore England a little bit more, and in 2020 I went to Dorset, a county in the southwest of England, famous for its beaches, and it was glorious. I started in a little town called Swanage, then went to Weymouth, and then ended my holiday in Bournemouth, which some of you may know as a university city. Bournemouth is our prime beach resort, I would say, and it has sandy beaches, which I like much more than pebble beaches. There are obviously some hidden parts with pebbles, but most of the beaches are sandy. The weather was sensational. It was consistently hot, but in an enjoyable way. And I can't quite describe the feeling of relief that engulfed me when I realised that I did not have to be scared of the sun anymore. In Italy, I hate the feeling of the sun on my skin because it's unbearable, whereas in England, I love it because it's a positive and enjoyable heat. And for the first time in my life, I actually lay on the sand without a parasol and I basked in the sun. As bizarre as this may sound, this really was a pivotal moment for me, because I already knew that I liked the London heat, and I love London in the summer, but I'd never really been to a beach in England during the summer, so I was a little bit wary of what might happen, but I was absolutely blown away. This year I went back with my mum and we explored the coast, called Jurassic Coast, and look at this. My pictures don't do it justice, so do go and Google it, because it was stunning, especially this, which is called Durdledore. Liverpool is on the opposite side, it's far up north, but I love the sand dunes, which I've never seen before in my life. Going back south, Brighton is a very popular destination, and it's a lovely city. What I don't like about it for a holiday, however, is the relentless wind and the pebble beaches. All of that being said, I understand that the way beaches work and look here may not exactly be what people from abroad would travel for to spend their whole holiday, but 
with a combination of sightseeing and relaxation, I think you should definitely spare a couple of days of your annual leave to come over here and see what we've got. Away from bodies of water, we have Oxford. I love the yellowish colour of its buildings. You have colleges to visit, left, right and centre. And if you're a Harry Potter fan, the Christ Church is the college whose main room inspired the Great Hall. We have the Roman Baths in Bath, which are absolutely brilliant, and we have Arundel Castle. And this is just me scratching the surface. There is so much more out there that you can come and visit. Last year I also went to Cardiff in Wales, not England, and I definitely saw things that I myself have been conditioned to believe don't exist over here, so I was very pleasantly surprised and again blown away. Scotland is also stunning, but I've never been myself, so I don't have any personal pictures to show you, but it's next on my list. That's the end of my tour. That was just a quick general smattering of what you can find in England and beyond, and I hope it's enough to change your possibly skewed opinion. As I said earlier, my own opinion of England is skewed due to the bad reputation that it seems to have, but every time I go somewhere and I explore it, it never disappoints. And how did you do with a vocabulary exercise? As promised, here is the list of all the words that I would like you to try and crack. Please write in the comments the definitions that you think these words have. Next week I will release the solutions, at which point please feel free to ask me questions and also tell me why you thought a word may have a definition that is different from the correct one. In the meantime, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel down below and I will see you on Thursday with my quick vocabulary video and next Tuesday with another instalment on the schwa and the solutions to today's video.